So when we read the Greeks, once on one level, the paradox is on one level, the Greek literature hits you over the head with a hammer. It, 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 the power of it is there. It's like a Beethoven symphony when you read Homer. You know why this is great literature. If the translation you're looking at has any value whatsoever, or if you're lucky enough to be reading it in the Greek, it hits you squarely on the head. Doesn't mean there isn't subtlety there, but you know this is great literature. This is expressing the human condition as I know it. And yet at the same time, there, the further you go into exploring what the literature, how the literature was presented in antiquity, on, on other levels it seems so completely alien to us. For one, on one level, the, the culture was, was so much, so much of it was experienced as, as an oral phenomenon. You know, the, 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 the Homeric poets recited their, their poems aloud. Probably no two performances by Homer or whoever Homer was or whatever group of people Homer was, no two performances would have been exactly the same. Uh, the theater of that time, you imagine how much color and, and, and contrast and diversity and, and passionate movement there must have been inside the ancient theaters. All of that choreography, of course, is lost to us. And uh, we have to try to imagine, uh, if we will, to exercise our imaginations if we're going to get any idea of what performance in the ancient theaters would have been like. So uh, one of the, the things that attracts you to the Greeks, I think, is our extraordinary closeness to them and, of course, our extraordinary distance to them. I think perhaps it's dangerous, for all I said about how, how close we are to the Greeks, it's dangerous on one level to think, well, they're just like us, and the literature is just like us. For all that I said of how they boil things down to the essential, all of which is true, at the same time, there is also one must have a comfortable historical awareness that it was a very different time and their ways of taking in media and, and cultural products were different from, from uh, those of today. I mean, there's a reason why Socrates, the philosopher, distrusted the written word. Uh, he was still coming out of a culture that, that had a, a, a powerful oral tradition. Uh, literate, uh, literacy was still relatively new, just a hundred or so years before, did, 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 uh, if, I'm, if I'm correct, did, did writing come to Athens? Or 150 years before, did writing come to Athens? And there was that fear of writing that we perhaps, that old codgers like me feel about the internet or digital technology. Uh, an awareness of once it's written and it's out there, uh, you know, anything can be done to it. Any distortion to what you say or think that you, you put down on papyrus can be turned against you. And uh, I mean, these are those kinds of anxieties seem very quaint and odd to us today, but they're there, I think, also to remind us of just how different we are also from, from, from the ancients. But uh, just because a culture is different from us in many respects doesn't mean we shouldn't try to meet it halfway. Uh, the Greeks, in many respects, failed in so many levels in, in terms of what we take for granted in human rights. They, they were a slave-owning class. No one in antiquity, I mean, they, they, they had slave-owning uh, all over classical antiquity. Athens was built out of slave labor in the silver mines. Uh, women were second-class citizens who could not vote who were, as, as Pericles is supposed to have said, better to be seen and not heard. All of these things are naturally repellent to us today. Uh, but then again, our very ideas of enfranchisement, of, of political freedom, uh, had their roots in Greek classical antiquity. They, they, we need to take them both as they were and understand their failures, but also realize that much of our idea about success in terms of social progress and, and equality come from Greek models. So I think it, it, it's very provincial to, to, to put down the, I mean, it, it, it's honest to be aware of the, the, of, the, of the severe limitations of freedom in the Greek world, but it's also very provincial historically to look, to look down on them then. And so these are people living 2,500 years ago. Of course things are going to be different. Uh, and we need to appreciate those differences, but we also need to appreciate how, in a way, they are the foundation stones on which our... <laughs> I can gesture again to that classical building behind, the classical themed 19th century building behind me. They are foundation stones on which our modern society and our ideals are built on. And we've learned 
in many ways and will continue to learn from their failures, just as we learn from our own failures. And we are very far from a perfect society to this day, but we, we, we aim at, at, at finding a better and better, a, a more, finding a more perfect union. We, we learn from them and we learn from their errors, but, we, but the fact that they were imperfect is, 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 is a really rotten excuse uh, to, to, to not learn from them and not try to meet them halfway.